Welcome back to Tiger T. This is something, something that's going on, man. It's, it's something, something crazy. Uh, Tyler right here, sitting down. Raymond over there. Floating. Sitting down as well. No, sitting down, okay. And uh, yeah, it's Untitled and Focused. Talk about a bunch of stuff. A bunch of, bunch of random stuff, you know what I mean? Uh, you find it on YouTube, podcast services. Make sure to like it. <laughs> Hit the bell on YouTube, you know, if they, if they still got a bell. Do you have you hit the bell on any channels you subscribe to, Ray? I actually have, yeah. Yeah. I feel like I check. Well, I mean, I always have a YouTube tab open, <laughs> so I feel like. Well, no, I guess if there's a channel I really liked and wanted a video to come out, I, I guess right I now because I'm stuck in VTube or hell, I have the yeah. notification, so I know when streams are coming live. Mm, okay. I mean, you gotta know. You, you gotta know these things. Um, so yeah, what's, what's today? Today is book day. Everyone's favorite day, if you're a librarian. Oh, we don't even um, read books here, we read a comic. The comic, that's true, yeah, yeah, comic. We, we mix it up today. They weren't ready for that. How was your, uh, reading in elementary school, Ray? Like, uh, you had a little library in your, in, in your school? Well, it was like, it was like in first and second grade, I think. Whichever grade, like. Like, you know, like, uh, I think it was, like, first grade. Like, they put me, like, straight on chapter books for, like, you, oh, uh, nice. you monster. I'm pretty sure they did the same for you, too. We talked about this, I think. Probably, yeah. Yeah. I know in, like, kindergarten, when they were, like, you know, kindergarten, first year. Well, like, I didn't, I didn't go to pre-K or anything like that. So, like, kindergarten. Was I went to pre-K. I never went to kindergarten. That's weird. That's... Well, I went to pre-K in, uh, in Florida. And then when I moved to New York, I went straight to first grade. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, like... But when I said I took pre-K in Florida, I meant I was like there for like a week. Oh, or two. okay. I was like there for like a month, I think. And like they like my parents took me out. They're like, you're like not learning anything there at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like that's an idiot. It's like they're. I just, I just know in kindergarten they they did this cool thing where, um, they didn't like let you pick out books. They every week or whatever, or maybe every two weeks, I don't know. They would just give you a bag with your name on it. Like a, I don't know what to compare it to. It's just like a bag, and um, the librarian specially picked out books for you. And I guess the point was, was it was supposed to match your like comprehension level, you know? Mm-hmm. So like if you weren't if you weren't that good at reading, you get simpler books, maybe more picture books. You got like you know like the caterpillar book. Oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. What what's the name of that book? Or you like Rainbow Fish? Rainbow Fish was cool. Rainbow Fish popping. And then there was Rainbow Fish sequels. Yeah, there was. I remember. I remember being a crazy concept to me that like we read the first book and then like a year later or whatever the second book came out and they read it. I was like, oh man, dude, a sequel to a book, to a picture book? Is that a real thing? People do that. Um, another thing. Hungry little caterpillar. Hungry little caterpillar. Yeah. I didn't even look it up. I just remembered. I was just scrolling through on my phone. Another thing they did, Ray, l- l- let me tell you, um, let me see if they did it for you, too. I think it was, like, the weeks would alternate. So, like, a week, for example, they didn't call it this, but, like, a week, you would you would go to the library once a week and take out books, right? And then every two weeks or whatever, you had to replace them. On the B week, the the alternating week, they would, like, read books to us. But it was like like younger grades, obviously not like sixth grade. They wouldn't read a book to us. Um, you know, I don't remember. All the, do not no? do not remember anything like that. I don't remember anything like. I can say like for certain, I don't remember anything about elementary school. Like in oh, exactly. Yeah. I remember. I remember you told me about this and how like, yeah, yeah, elementary. Like, school. like let me hit you with this right now. Like my entirety of elementary school and middle school are like probably blurs to me. I remember like small things. And like I guess people I've met in those times. I feel like middle school is definitely that for me. I like, think middle I didn't... school, I blurred it on purpose. <laughs> yeah, I same. I feel like middle school was like my least favorite school. <laughs> I blurred it on purpose. Yeah. But to be fair, I met a lot of people I liked in middle school, though. Like, and hang out with, like, I think, like, Michael and Ethan. Like, hang out with them all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, then, then, you know, good stuff came out of it then, right? Yeah. But it's like, I'll blur most of it because I guess like, I just didn't really care. Mm-hmm. I feel like middle school as a concept 
should not exist. Yeah, it's, it, it's just like... I feel like you can tax 7th grade onto elementary school and give 8th grade to like high school. You're fine. Yeah. Again, we've we talked about this before. The whole school system is like completely wrong. You know, how they do things, how they set stuff up. It's got to be different, you know. And then like state by state, it's different. You know? That's true. There's there's no actual like a uh, concrete level. Yeah. Which is like where like I guess I can praise IB a bit where IB if you go to like an actual IB like elementary school and high school high school they have like the grade curriculum is like all standardized and everything. Yeah. I can praise that like having that standard set for like all your schools. Whether it's like just young children, like older children, there's like a certain way they have to have it and what they yeah. have to Yeah, there was some cool stuff about IB. They had they had some cool ideas. It is weird, though, just like, you know, it's kind of jarring going from not that to IB. And it's like, oh, there's this whole different way that you should be, like, taking these classes and stuff, you know? Yeah, but then, like, when you realize, like, like it wasn't meant for us, that that's the thing, like, when we go into that. So it was kind of weird for us going in. But it was meant for people who were already used to that type of mindset coming in from other classes. Like, they were literally, like, the schools that they start in are geared towards pushing them to that. Yeah. So it's something that's already natural. That's yeah. odd. It's not like course correct. Mm -hmm. It's like we're jumping in mid shift, and you know, but like other people who are doing it, they're like, you know, they look at it, it's like normal. Yeah. Um. So Ray, Avatar, The Promise, comic we that we read. What was The Promise, Tyler? Do you remember what The Promise was? So, I was actually kind of confused about that, like, looking back, what the promise is supposed to be, because there was... I'm pretty sure I think I know what the promise is supposed to be. Like, I'll, 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 the promise was just supposed to be, like, Aang promising that he's going to kill Zuko. Okay. If he turns out like Okay, yeah, yeah, because, yeah, the, the other promise that um, was in there was that... Uh, Zuko kind of broke his promise with supporting the what was it, like the, the whole harm, restoration, yeah, restoration movement. Yeah, so like I agree with you that yeah, the promise overall is supposed to be killing him or whatever. <laughs> but uh, there's another promise in there too. So there's two promises, mm -hmm. and both of them were broken on this day. Yeah, on, at the exact same moment, <laughs> it's the yeah. literal, it's the actual moment that they're looking mm -hmm. at. Um. I did say, the promise is savage in a weird way towards the ending. Yeah, so uh, we can just start with the ending, which is the pretty cool. So Aang, right, which I thought was, was nice character growth, and it does show, I don't know, him, him just being different and thinking different and the whole... Becoming like, like more of himself. Yeah, yeah, which, which is funny. An another quick tangent is how... Uh, what's her name? Cora was like crucified <laughs> because mm -hmm. she didn't want to, or well, not that I don't know why she didn't want to, but she wasn't naturally spiritually inclined. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. To the point of her, the whole chain like got broken because of her, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you know, fans of the show or whatever can think what they want about that, but then you read this, and it's like, Aang is. Aang's the real savage here. He's like willingly doing it. He's like, nah, I'm not going to listen to none of you. All you guys are wrong. He has this line that I love. And he says that this is a new kind of world. Where he's like, all the stuff that you guys did was cool and it might have worked for you. But this isn't going to work here. You know, we're actually trying to change things. To, to innovate society and not just stay stagnant. I mean, your ways cause of the war <laughs> that I had that I had to fix for you, you know. And it's just uh, it's cool. And then even more savagery, he like broke and then burnt his necklace, which was what kind of he used to channel Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like my man's literally said a Roku, you of all people? No. Everyone else he's like even Kiyoshi I speak to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like I trusted you, Roku. And you broke yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, man. Roku he also called Roku out by himself, and he's like, "You? No, I don't speak to you." 
not not in this lifetime. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> uh, well, I was gonna say something about Roku. So, oh yeah, Roku also waited the longest time to, to tell him Aang that he was uh, related to Zuko. Like I mean, the like, longest us, time. The viewers, we've known since Zuko knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aang's when, like, uh, you mean I'm just finding this out now? You uh, you really saying this? You want yeah. me to kill your family? <laughs> Yeah, and that just adds a whole other dimension to it, where it's like, wait, you're related to him, and then and then Roku's defense is like, well, that should make you push harder for it because I am related to him, and I'm telling you to do it. To be fair, that that's a good point Roku brings up. It's like, listen, it is. It's like yeah. I'm related to this guy, and I need you to end him. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's no good. <laughs> he's gonna cause problems. <laughs> end it now. I do like that like, phrasing when when Zuko asks him. He doesn't say to kill him. He says to end him. <laughs> I love that. It's like, it, like hearing Roku say that reminds me of like Ira with Azula. It's like she's crazy. She has to go down. It's like, it's like, it's like oh, we can make peace with Azula. No, no, I was like, no, <laughs> no, Azula. That's bad. We don't touch Azula. <laughs> she's a then, different dimension. But then with that, at the end, something I didn't expect was that they're actually getting Azula's help to find Ursa. I, yeah, so I don't know. Um, Have you read anything past this, Ray? Do you know? I've only read this in the search, so I've already okay. known, like, what happens in the search. Okay. So, if... so I haven't read anything. I didn't know they made stuff past that, which is weird. Okay. But, but the search in this I've done already, so this is not bad. So, um, don't spoil it for me then, but my whole thing is, are they trying... So, Zuko... Does he think that his mom is still alive? So the entire premise of the search is finding out the truth behind. It's it's working with Azula to find out the truth beyond what happened to their mother. That is the search. Okay, okay, because they they're like leaving. They're like all ready to. The search is a direct continuation to this. Working with Azula. Yeah, yeah, I saw. Um, leads into that immediately. I saw like the first page or something like that. It was some like preview with the first page, and it's like, yeah, they're they're leaving. They're the, the search starts <laughs> the next page after after this book. One one thing that's weird with this is I forgot that this is where the Boba T meme comes with Iroh. Yeah. I yeah, forgot that this is where the meme was from. It was from The Promise. I thought that was really funny when when <laughs> when I was reading it and he was explaining it, I was like, is he is he describing Boba T? And it was like, he okay, he invented that, I guess. In in, in the Avatar universe, Iroh invented Boba T and he's ahead of his yeah. time. So good. He actually said that too, didn't he? He was like, I'm... "He's like, I'm a man ahead of my, <laughs> yeah, or something like that." Mm-hmm. Something along those lines. Yeah. yeah, he recognizes. I also like we see, because you know, me and you have watched Korra, and there's a huge this gap. This is supposed to be Republic City. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh. Well, no, I mean, you say that and it makes sense. Yeah. Um, you know, because it's like. The, the the form now so yeah have, that's uh, the, the meeting of the firebenders and earthbenders uh the waterbenders are going to be coming in soon but uh this is like the formation of republic city was there's a huge gap between avatar and korra right the mm-hmm. the shows or whatever and in, in korra you see that the air nomads or whatever have been rebuilt uh mm-hmm. you know to to some degree and then later on in the show i don't want to spoil it but you know it gets improved upon or whatever but here they they do kind of bridge it where Aang decides to teach the the air acolytes and and his you culture. know decides to teach him his yeah. ways yeah and he's like, like at first he was upset as we saw like in the book obviously yeah he was he's like, like you're Very disrespecting upset. me mm-hmm. and then like afterwards he like you know, he makes peace with that and he's like no I can teach you and like we can keep preserving our culture even more, yeah. even past my time which is nice I mean because he I forget who we talked to it might have been Katara that he talked to but. He was like dealing with that, trying to be like, well, I'm I'm the last one, so if I don't, you know, you know, if I'm so protective of my culture and stuff, and I don't let anyone in, then it's gonna die with me. Yeah, it, you know, it's so. Katara. He's like, you know, and Katara like also like looks at like the city and sees like her and Aang, like a water mm-hmm. bender and air bender, and similar like yeah. look, fire benders and earth benders having their peace, and she's like, we have to have like a blend of cultures, like the harmonic movement can't work. At least, it's, you know, Katara sees that, like, with Zuko. Again, Katara siding with Zuko, it's, like, a weird thing to look at, but she always did side with Zuko and, like, weird stuff. 
Like mm-hmm. even though like when you're going through Cheryl like season one and season two, like she's oddly sides with Zuko like weird points. Yeah, yeah, she does. I mean, because Zuko, you know, he's not his dad, you know, and he does have good ideas and he is smart. It's just that for the show, he had to be the antagonist, you know, because there's still part of him that needed to get the Avatar and his honor or whatever. But that's why his redemption arc is probably the best in the entire show. It's because he kind of... Like ten episodes of redemption. It's so good. Yeah. Um, yeah, with, you know, even, like, stripping all of that away, just just the whole, she's, she's water, he's air. Like, if, if, if you just look at that, she has to side with Zuko because, you know, exactly like you said, she looks over here, she sees fire and earth, and she's like, well, we're going to be hypocrites if we tell them to split and we're still, like, together. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, well, why are we allowed to do it? Because you're the Avatar? That's that's not fair. Because you mm-hmm. are air. Like, you know all the elements or whatever, but you're from the air, the air temple. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, that's your culture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did like that they were kind of messing around with that, though. How how Aang was so stuck. You know, he was he was ready to die in that hill. That it was like they're supposed to be separate. That's the whole point. They have separate cultures. They they think differently. They 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 build different stuff. And and I do like that. That's really awesome to say that as the Avatar. The Avatar was like the culmination. Yeah. And even Iroh himself was like showing like the blend of like the elements. Yeah. It's so weird. You think the Avatar learning like just the fact that the Avatar exists as an idea. That they're allowed mm-hmm. to learn all the elements, and they're supposed to learn the and cultures. learning the culture of everyone else, you know, yeah, like adopting you, their principles. Like, I always thought that that was the point: was that you're supposed to bring them together, like peace and harmony. And like, isn't like another thing that he brings up in the show, like he's the bridge between the nations? Yeah. Yes. And or also, maybe is he only supposed to be the bridge, and they're still supposed to be separated? Is that how he's perceiving it as? Yeah, probably. That's probably the way he's interpreting it to help his own argument, which which isn't wrong. I mean, he's allowed to think that, but I mean, he's that... wrong. But I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You would think that after a hundred year war, you would <laughs> you would not think that, and you that, would that shows like, hey. that separation is not your decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and all these people seem happy, you know. Like his, you know, a big part of his argument was that. If two nations meld together, one is always going to be stronger, and one is always going to like take charge, and like put down the other one. But I don't, I don't think that happened in in the book, did it? The closest thing they have is like the Great Divide, and in the Great Divide, like they still like were like pretty blended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he I was able that... to take that down easy in the Great Divide. And people hate the Great Divide. <laughs> I think if people are happy, then. I don't know why you would get in the way of that. Like it's weird. And then when, when he was he did his he was like super mad or whatever, and he like did like an earthquake kind of. I don't know how else to describe it. I thought he was gonna lift up the city and like move it somewhere else. (laughs) And I was like, is this his solution? (laughs) He's just gonna move them. I forgot that on like it's Republic City as well because that's also where. uh... Toph is like starting her metal bending. Yes, yeah, yeah. So just it just all like culminates there. It's all like just the beginning. I thought that was a good side story too. Where I was like, oh, you got this, and then I'm gonna train these people. Like Toph and, and Sokka doing their like side thing. Yeah, yeah. And 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 they did finally metal bend, which was cool. Yeah, man, they got the coins. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't know, man. I think that... I think it covers, man. We covered a lot. We, we also see... Anything, we see the the return of the, the the Freedom Fighters. They're back. Oh, yeah. Smeller B and... Uh... Longshot. Longshot? Yeah. Hey. Longshot. And also there's this other one, which... I thought was weird. You know, it almost felt like they were, like, retconning something. But there was this other member... And like he was the one in the Fire Earth Nation that fell in love with that one girl that had like the spike ball thing. Well, like you know I mean? and... and like the whole explanation of why he wasn't there. Sneers. Yeah, sneers. The whole explanation of why he wasn't there was because 
he stayed and then I guess him falling in love with her was why he stayed and then you know him like oh man I I like the Fire Jet? Nation now <laughs> is Jet dead? do we know that for a fact? no one really knows if Jet's dead <laughs> I mean the last we saw of him was oh I was about to say the last we saw of him was when he got washed away then I was like no we saw him in Ba Sing Se yeah, he was in the bossing say. No one knows what happens in bossing say. But then what? What happened? No to one him? speaks about. It. Like, you think Smeller? Smeller be in Long Shot gonna talk about it, dude? They went back for him. Where's Jet? Is he dead? Is he permanently injured? Is he I crazy? I wonder if we're gonna see him in a future comic book. Because there's like will, seven maybe. more. <laughs> I would look up Jet Avatar. I'm really confused. Um, don't get it twisted though. Aang almost killed Zuko like tw- two times. Yeah, like seriously, like, <laughs> he, almost, he was almost here. He was almost ready for the smoke, you know. Um, we saw the return of the Kyoshi Warriors, which I liked, mm-hmm. with uh, Ty Lee being a member, which we already knew it. We saw it in the in the show, but I thought that was nice. You know, they're still relevant. Suki is still here. Um, yeah, I think that's um, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Are you reading what happened to Jet Ray? No one knows really what happened. The <laughs> wiki presumes he's dead and dies to serious internal injuries, but they're just saying that they again they're just saying that like he dies from injuries. Where they have the like show a, really goes on and it says it was really unclear if Jeddah actually died or not. Do they have like a last appearance? Because I don't remember what he was doing when he saw when we saw him last. His last I appearance don't... was him fighting Long Fang. Oh right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, man. I think that's that's it for the promise. I like um. You know, I'm interested to see where it goes from here. You know, when I eventually read the search, <laughs> um, they, they 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 got Azula. Oh, for the Avatar extras, they did, like you know, like the like uh, special episodes they had on Nicktoons. Yeah. The bubbles. They did mm-hmm. have one that said, "For the record, Jet is dead." Oh, okay. Okay. Well, so, well now we know. Jet's dead, dude. Confirmed. <laughs> uh, I am breaking news. <laughs> Jet is yeah, dead. He's actually... <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'm. I'm gonna just see where they go. I'm just to see what Azula does. I feel like Azula is a wild card. I don't trust her. I don't think you should. Um, I'm just to see what happened to her mom, or their mom, if she's dead. Um, which I feel like she has to be because you know it's a mom. I feel like moms will do anything to get back to their kids, even though mm-hmm. her ex husband is. The Fire Lord, I mean, he's not anymore, but, you know, Fire Lord has a lot of power. Could probably keep her out, right? But I feel like she would get crafty, you know? She is the mother of both Zuko and Azula, so she can't be stupid, you know? So. Yeah, man. Did you see the other day that they announced they're doing Korra novels? Korra comics or whatever? Doing a, a, a trilogy of Korra comics. Are they doing Korra comics, dude? Yup. Proceeds to go back to the Avatar wiki. <laughs> um, I forget how... I See, I don't remember how Korra ended. I remember how the third season ended, because I thought it was going to be the last season to, like, mirror Avatar with three seasons. They kissed. Is that how it ended? Am I wrong? Oh, and, like, and, and like the, the, the spirit the world... Boat. Oh, like a boat? Oh, maybe. I don't know. Am I wrong? You could be. Could be wrong. Yeah. Oh, yes. Katara and the Pirate Silver. Toph Beifong's Metal Bending Academy. Where's the Korra comics? Well, the Korra comics aren't out yet. Shadow of Kyoshi, Rise of Kyoshi, Imbalance, Netflix adaptation. 
me and you already talked about it. we didn't talk about it on here but like man those the whole netflix adaptation the expectations for it have dropped severely <laughs> oh yeah like i don't expect anything yeah because if you didn't know there were you know there was a movie that doesn't actually exist but uh, you know it was terrible and then they announced a netflix adaptation of the series and it was a pretty cool announcement you know and then we found out that the writers creators or whatever were going to be involved and it's like oh man could be good could be good because they didn't really have too much involvement in the movie that doesn't exist so high hopes and then recently they uh and also they're not going to do it anymore because of things like creative differences with netflix so man <laughs> i can't wait to see all those white people playing not white people that's gonna be real fun you know yo that's me also like real question do i like have an accent in my voice how do i sound to you do you, <laughs> how, do you how do you sound yeah i don't know I sound like a person like like do i sound i don't sound like a white person but i sound like a person is that just how it is do you sound like a white person i don't know i mean it's it's tough for you to ask me that right because i've talked to you, you, you so see long. Me. <laughs> You know, okay. Okay. Like, okay. I, this is like... gonna be stupid. How about now? <laughs> <laughs> so the joke there was that Ray cut out his camera from the Discord, <laughs> so I couldn't see him. Like somehow that would make me forget <laughs> what he looks like. It's <laughs> <laughs> a really stupid joke. I'm a comedian. <laughs> yeah, man, I don't, I don't know. I mean, what kind of accent do you think you have? I don't think I have an accent. Or if I do have one, it's like very slight. I mean, everyone has an accent, right? To You're someone. not wrong. Everyone has, but like, I don't think I have like a distinguishable accent. I don't think so. Except maybe like a, a, a northern accent. Like a northern. Maybe. Like. Like, not Southern accent. Sure, sure. Non-Southern yeah. accent. Yeah, I mean, I mean, also, you've lived here for so long that it's like, you just sound like people around you, because that's what happens. You know what I mean? I mean, unless you don't know English like, very well, then that would be different. Also, my parents don't have accents. Like, discernible accents, you know what I'm saying? Mm. See, like, they I, say stuff. I disagree with that. You see, see, that's the thing, though. Like, they don't, like, they don't have like a distinguishable guy in his accent. I'll stress that. Sure. I mean, you can probably get more specific with that because uh, I've I've never talked to someone with a. Well, I mean, I have, I guess. I mean, I feel like it's different for you though, because you live with them, so it's different. Mm -hmm. You know, so like you. I've had this, I think, a similar discussion with Wahid. Wahid said he can't understand a single thing my parents were saying. Mm. And he's not sure every time they're talking if they're speaking to him or to <laughs> someone else. That's, that's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I would say I'm like right in the middle of that between him and you. Where I was mm. like, I can understand what they're saying, but I definitely think that they. I mean, yeah, they definitely have more of an accent than you, I would say. Um, yeah, you, you, you probably don't think that because you live, live with, with them. them. Yeah. And it sounds normal to me. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking, right? Like, like yeah. I'm not trying to psych myself out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whereas you, I've like heard you talk, I mean, at least 10 times. So like, I, I know, you know, I, I, I think I have a distinguishable accent though. I think if anything, it's like a, a non-Southern American accent. Sure. Yeah. That I have doesn't sound like, any way ethnic at any point to <laughs> me it's funny when like uh whatever like shows or movies they do like new york accents and i'm like i don't think i sound like that hey yo <laughs> <laughs> but like also i wasn't born come in, like, down here i wasn't born in like new york city is where i feel like that new york. accent originates <laughs> new york <laughs> but then Boston. like th there's also like northeastern stuff but like i i don't say stuff typically <laughs> typically nor'eastern like like um oranges no uh, orange 
Yeah, it's like A R oranges. I don't say that. I say orange. Orange. I say I say that, but that, I say because it like it's like a pirate would say it. Or or orange. Orange. <laughs> orange. <laughs> Why do pirates eat limes and lemons? Why don't they eat oranges? You know what I'm saying? Eat oranges. Backs out your scurvy. <laughs> or like jimmies. I feel like I've never heard someone say jimmies in my life. Swab the deck or you lose your jimmies. Nope, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Are jimmies like the sprinkles again? <laughs> yeah, jimmies are sprinkles. <laughs> Why are there sprinkles on a pirate ship? <laughs> Alright, I just realized jimmies were sprinkles. Hold up. Let yeah. me uh... Let me get my pen and paper out. Jimmy's or sprinkles. Sprinkles is also a way better word for sprinkles. Because I'm putting some Jimmy's on my ice cream. Sprinkle. You, know, you, 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 you sprinkle them. Put you some know? Jimmy's on your soft serve. Soft serve is great. Soft serve is okay. so good. It's way soft better. It's a shame I eat hard serve, but that's only because, like, I mean, it's easier to buy by the gallon. You can't oh, buy sure. soft I serve. mean, you can't buy soft serve. Yeah. Like in a carton. You know, yeah. soft service. I mean, you it. can. You can just like. <laughs> <laughs> you have to like mix it, like really. <laughs> and you just need to buy all your soft serve and put it all in this tub right here, so I can walk back to my house real quick. <laughs> It'll be fine. Do you um, do you ever go to Jumpin' Jacks? Like every like I think two or three years. I'm not gonna say like I go there like all the time. Like once every two or three years. We probably go there like once or twice a year. And and a lot of times it's just to get ice cream because they have like good soft serve ice cream there. Yeah, they have like yeah, a whole separate thing. Serve. But their their like food is pretty good too, though. They just have like burgers and hot dogs and whatever. The problem with their food is that they can afford to charge it a little more for their food because they know you come there for the ice cream mainly. Yeah, yeah. They're like, Yo, we can put you like a five dollar hot dog and you're gonna buy it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the drink on the side. We got her now. Because <laughs> they can do that. They can do it. And also when they have, like, special nights, which I've, I mean, I've gone to, but I've gone to, like, see the fireworks there. Um, all that stuff is free. Like, when they have, like, concerts playing and stuff and, like, water uh, events, whatever, like, jet skis and stuff. So it's, like, you know, it's not bad. They get they bad to the community. It's not like they don't. And, like, yeah, they yeah. were hurt pretty bad, like, when we had the hurricanes, like, a while ago. Irene, so, right? Wasn't it? Yeah, they were Irene? hurt pretty bad. So, yeah, I mean, like. Sandy. They, yeah, they were hit by Sandy, yeah. Yeah, not so like, it's not like you know you can't give them plaque. You, you can't, dude. They they've done a lot for the community. They've like do they they hold their fundraising events right. They have concerts like uh, during the summer. They try to hold them off and couldn't do anything this year. Um, yeah, but that's yeah, yeah. different. Um, yeah, fireworks for Fourth of July. They're like always doing them. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, at least the way the weather is now, they probably would still be open. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. Um, I don't know. What I was gonna say something. I forgot. That's the promise there. So that's the promise. <laughs> I feel like the minority of that episode was talking about the promise. We actually did talk um, a decent amount. No, yeah, it was, it was good. It. We, did, we, 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 we just went aside, really. That was the... So, something I didn't think about, Ray, was what we're going to do next. What work we're going to do about next. I, I didn't Let think about this at all. List. I got the list here. Um, so, yeah, we finished the promise, man. We, we'll probably do the search, but, like, not for a while, because we'll let the space stuff out. We do, like, um, space things out. Unfortunately, I already watched The Boys season two. It was pretty good. I watched it as well. It was good. It's good. That that last episode, man, changes everything. Beautiful. Yeah, it's good. It was really good. I mean, yeah, and so we're gonna replace this with another book. You know, we're book slot is heavy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I haven't I haven't thought about what we're gonna replace it with. I didn't even look. There's only a few books on there that I even know. <laughs> but uh yeah, Ray Ray will pick. Because I mean I picked the promise. What we did we do before the promise? the promise? We did Lord of Flies. Lord of Flies. Which I think I also picked. <laughs> to be fair, I will say I'm uh it's easier that way for me to have it happen that way. I like that you have preacher on here for comics. Yeah. Because the guy who made the boys also made Preacher. Oh, really? I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Like, he made both comics. Also, the boys comic are very different from, Preacher, uh, from the boys show. Sure, yeah. I can see that. I say very different, but, like, there's differences enough to have it go in different directions when they have it. 
which is cool for people who like do both mm-hmm. and the show from what i'm hearing like there are fans of like the show in the comics um there are some hardcore comic fans who are like i don't like this because it's not exactly the same of course um, yeah but then there's also the comic fans who are like they're doing their own adaptation and it's going pretty well for what they're planning to do and for how the characters are going on i feel like if 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 game of thrones was done well the the it, book it, fans would have never well, it would it would have popped off everyone been like yes yeah. let's go you know book fans would have never complained but because it got bad they were like see book is better you should do the book. That, that's true it's because it was awful that's why mm-hmm. it's because like like you think people complain about first full metal alchemist no one complains about first full metal dude everyone's like first full metal is good it's just that brotherhood's better it's like <laughs> it's true it's like, yeah. no one's gonna tell you not to watch first full metal they're like watch it anyway it's a different ending you're gonna mm-hmm. different things happen in it you're gonna love it <laughs> it's like my anime relation there or do you think people are going to tell you like oh only watch one fate route oh. <laughs> there's like three of them dude watch I feel like three. Walking Dead I feel like Walking Dead never that never happened because the the show is, has deviated very far from the comics from, from what I know um people, but, right. I don't see people complain about the Walking Dead yeah but I don't I don't, see it. I don't remember there being an uproar from the comic fans like, oh it's so different because they got different very early, where apparently, um, you know, there's no spoilers, but in the also, second like, season... they literally added a character. Yeah, Daryl, which is the best, in my opinion, the best character in the show. Um, but yeah, because apparently, apparently even in the second season, you know, they go to a farm. It's like a big thing, they go to a farm. I guess spoilers for second season, but that's the very beginning of the show. Um, and, like, the family's even different, where it's, like, in the comics, there's, like, parents, and then their kids are like three boys but in the show it's two girls <laughs> okay. so it's very different three boys versus two so it's already like the characters are super different um both those characters are great but i feel like they probably got ahead of that by just being we're, we're different from the beginning um so many deaths are different to give you something similar with the boys i mean like this is gonna be non-spoilery for the show uh simon Pegg, as you see in is in the boys. Dude, every time I saw Simon Pegg, I was like, How, why is Simon Pegg in this? It's it's so good. Like he's he's just in a the side comic character. Okay, in the comic, Huey actually was based to look like Simon Pegg. And was based to be like this like British uh, Okay, okay, okay. Uh, like yeah. believer in like uh conspiracy theories. Sure, yeah. Simon Pegg was you know, he was given the role to do the voice for Huey. And he said, I'm too old. I can't do Huey now. But I can it's be true. in the show yeah. as a cameo. And you mm-hmm. can have me, like, you know, call me in whenever you want me to come in for do scenes. He's like, he's like, I'm honored that, you know, you the boys, you know, he was he knew he was like the one they based Huey on. Yeah. They yeah, based yeah. Huey on him and his character. So they had to rewrite Huey and change the show up. Mm. That's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean the thing of it now like, yeah, he he is too old. To play Simon Pegg, it wouldn't make sense. But the entire idea of like Huey was ba- at least in the comics is based on Simon Pegg. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which which does make sense when you when you look at what kind of character Huey is. It's a different character too entirely. Like Huey in the comics, he's like a crazy conspiracy theorist. Yeah, yeah. He's like he's like he's like, oh, he's like oh he's like it's like the moon doesn't exist. It's all made by alien <laughs> lizard men who came here from three hundred years ago. It's like what are you doing, you? <laughs> and you just imagine Simon Pegg saying all this stuff. Yeah, I can. Yeah. <laughs> So, right, have you uh, you pick a book yet? List. Look at the list, man. We gotta mix it up, dude. I don't mix it up. What's Put it in a pot. One? Make some cake, and serve yeah. it to the people. Let people. Did you ever eat read cake. the City of Ember or the Book Thief? Um, I've read the City of Ember, but I, I feel like I don't remember it. I, I, I probably remember at the beginning because I feel like I've started the City of Ember like seven times. Um, so that's like me with Dune. Like, remember I told you like I had the hardest time getting into Dune? Dude, Dune, I do want to read at some point because the movie's coming out. The movie looks sick. The movie's only going to be the first half, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, it's going to be a two-parter. Because what I've heard, there's like so much. They wouldn't be able to. Um, but but the book that you've never read. I don't even know anything about it. Well, I mean, okay, I, I probably read the synopsis. I one of those two. Or the illustrated man, so you can pick out of those oh, three. See. Okay. Um, 
Illustrated Man is Ray Bradbury, right? Yeah. We should do that. Because right. uh, Fahrenheit 451, good book. We, we like our Bradbury, ironically, we do. I like it a lot more after the fact. Because, you know, uh, Fahrenheit 451 was a book that we read. Well, I don't know if this was the first time you read it as well, but read it in school. And, yeah. uh, you know, when you know, whenever it's like an assignment, it's like, ah, you know, you know, because, you know, the the teachers want you to think about it in a certain way. I was like, what if I don't think about it in that way? You know, I don't know. This isn't how I want to enjoy this book. But in hindsight, great book. Fantastic. I just hate that we never did Crime and Punishment. I mean, I'm going to keep that on. I know. That's crazy. It was me, you, and Evan. We're like super hyped. And he yeah, killed that dream. We also never we we also never finished Othello. We never finished. Well, that that's different. We can't. We forgive her for that. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, I don't blame her at all. I'm just. I'm not just saying other we gripes. Blame the school system. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom line for this episode: blame the school system. We blame the school system for us not reading Othello, or finishing yeah. it. We did finish reading Othello, but we never finished the course with it. Yeah, Yeah. yeah. We never finished going as deep as we were going to be, and everyone was hyped for Othello too. That's the weird. Thing. Which was crazy because <laughs> our paper... class was so divided. Can you imagine? Like you had like thirty students in this class, all divided. We didn't want to do anything. We all hit Othello. We're like, yo. <laughs> yes. Every like like I mean, maybe not, but in my mind, every single person was like, we can't wait till English class. We're gonna read. We're gonna keep reading Othello. Crazy because on paper. It doesn't work. <laughs> they never happen. We're all excited for some. I don't know if Shakespeare wrote it, but you know Shakespeare type stuff. You know some. What grade was that? Tenth grade. Some tenth graders. No way. Imagine no way. that, like your your English teacher must be like the most happiest person in the world to have like every yeah. student come in this class and be excited to read Shakespeare. Yeah. Unironically. 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 Excited. That's the best part too. It wasn't like, oh yeah, Othello. Can't wait. It's like, no, we we need to read this. <laughs> Everyone was like, yo, it's a fellow time. Let's go. <laughs> and then the same thing happened with Hamlet, too. We did Hamlet. I'm yeah. just pretty excited. Because they got us hooked on that Othello. It's like, oh, gonna love Shakespeare through Othello. Man, do, you, do you remember in, in that class towards, the, I think it was the end of class, right? Or the end of the year, where she had, like, the big checklist written on the on, on the back of the board. Of, like, you all the stuff that, right? you had remember, I was, like, gone for, like, a month. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, that that was tenth grade. Do you remember that though? No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because I I don't remember when in the timeline <laughs> you you weren't there. Like what like what months or whatever. This is gonna be weird to explain to people on the podcast. I was gone from school for a month in tenth grade. I did yeah. personal family issues. I, I left yeah. school for a month, and then mm-hmm. I came back. Um, but I was a caught I was caught, I caught up on my schoolwork. Ironically, because I, I, I was given schoolwork for a month in preparation. Yep, you uh, did. Yeah. So, um, so when I came back, I'd be fine. Um, I we didn't expect to be a month, but just in case, I teachers did give me extra stuff because I said I was only gonna be on for like a week, but I said it could be longer, so they did prepare like stuff for like two or three weeks in advance. Mm-hmm. Um, I was gone for a while. I came back, dude. Everyone, this was the same time like there was like the flight that was gone. Malaysian uh, airline. The Malaysian yeah. airline, yo, and everyone was like, "Yo, Raymond's gone, dude." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that was. That was real big, big and hard, and me, Kevin, Justin, we're all like, dude, it was him. <laughs> he was there. He's, 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 he was one of the people that went down in the ocean, man. I don't know. And the thing is, like, after a week, it's like, okay, okay. After, like, two weeks, all right. Three weeks, everyone's like, oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, because I don't, I mean, I don't know if you talked to anyone, but I know you didn't talk, like, we didn't, like, text you or nothing. So, we're like, I don't know, man. You could, <laughs> I mean, probably not, but maybe. <laughs> everyone's like, like, most likely not, but, like. It's like, where's Raymond? He's been here for a while. Raymond would normally be here, right? right? It's Raymond. Like, like, it's perfect Raymond. Attendance. I mean, like, he's here every day. Like, uh. <laughs> that was a hype time. Um, but yeah, we're doing the Illustrated Man. <laughs> illustrated Man. Ray Bradbury. Um, yeah, That's we're me. doing that. Be a good time. So, uh, yeah. That's it, man. Be good to yourselves. Be good to others. Blame um, the school system. Yeah. Blame yeah, that's a great way to end it. Blame just blame the school system, you know. <laughs>